Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, the hematology and oncologist in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men, and we know almost all men will develop prostate cancer if we live long enough. But majority of prostate cancer grows very slowly. That's why we never noticed we have a prostate cancer. However, about 30,000 men will die of prostate cancer every year. So it's important to distinguish those a slow growing cancer from rapidly growing and the fatal prostate cancer. We will discuss more detail in uh, two different uh, parts. Thank you for watching. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. A study shows that 70% of men of age 70s were found to have a prostate cancer. Most of prostate cancer patients have no symptoms. Usually it's diagnosed by abnormally high serum PSA level and the less commonly by abnormal digital rectal examination. About 80% have a localized disease and the 20% metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis. As this picture shows, the prostate locates just below the bladder. It can be uh, felt by uh, um, digital rectal examination. How to screen the prostate cancer? Usually with a blood test called a PSA. The PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. Its level goes up high uh, when patients develop prostate cancer or prostate infection or enlarged prostate. We used to do this PSA blood test along with a digital rectal exam every year, but this method have caused too many overdiagnoses and uh, too, too much overtreatments. So now uh, the screening is different. First of all, a physician must discuss with the patients about those uh, pros and cons of screening. It's called the shared decision making. U.S. Preventive Service Task Force recommend the PSA every one to two years without digital rectal exam for men who are aged 55 to 69. For men over 70, uh, screening should not be done uh, routinely. American Cancer Society uh, recommendation is a little bit different. They uh, recommend the screening starts at age 50 for men with average risk and age 45 for men at higher risk, like of African Americans or family history of prostate cancer, or age 40 for men even at even higher risk, uh, those who have a, a multiple uh, family history of prostate cancer or family history of BRCA1 or 2 mutation. After this discussion, men who want to be screened should get PSA results, a PSA test. Digital rectal exam may or may not be included. When to suspect prostate cancer? When do you recommend prostate biopsy? Well, when the patients have high PSA level, for example, over four. But some patients may not have a prostate cancer even with a PSA level higher than four, or patients have a prostate cancer even with a lower PSA level, so it's not highly reliable. And some doctors use the PSA uh, uh, velocity to increase over 0.75 over a year to uh, suspect the prostate cancer. Abnormal uh, digital rectal exam may suspect the prostate cancer, but this is not very accurate. Recently, a uh, prostate MRI scan is called a multi-parametric MRI. It's a, a much more uh, accurate. So in Europe, uh, many doctors order the uh, prostate MRI before uh, prostate biopsy. And the prostate biopsy can be done uh, under the guidance of this prostate MRI. And the gallium 68 PSMA PET CT scan is much more accurate than a regular ordinary PET CT scan. But abnormal, uh, but transrectal ultrasound, TRUS, is not as accurate as uh, MRI scan. I want to mention the conditions that raise the PSA level. Enlarge the prostate called the uh, BPH, prostatitis infection, UTI and the irritating by bicycling or sexual activity. So the PSA test should be done at least after 48 hours after the bicycling or sexual activity. Aging increases the PSA level. And the certain medicine for the BPH like a Proscar or a Abodart can lower the PSA level. Some other helpful tests include the PSA density uh, and also free and the bound PSA ratio. That has been used much more frequently. High bound PSA increases the risk of uh, cancer. And there are some other molecular or genetic tests uh, and the complex PSA 
somebody say it's actually much more accurate than routine PSA. When a patient is suspected of having prostate cancer, for example, with a very high PSA, then we do the uh, transrectal ultrasound guided prostate biopsy, TURS prostate biopsy. It's a standard biopsy methods, and it's kind of a blind core biopsy obtaining 12 cores from the uh, prostate gland. If it's negative, but prostate cancer is strongly suspected, then MRI targeted biopsy uh, is indicated. And uh, uh, as you see this picture, the uh, ultrasound probe is ent uh, in inserted into the rectum. And uh, with this guidance, the needle will hit the uh, prostate to obtain the uh, prostate sample. And this man having this prostate biopsy. As I mentioned, the multi-parametric prostate MRI is increasingly used before the biopsy. When it shows the a very low chance of prostate cancer, then you don't need a biopsy. Uh, it takes uh, fewer cores, uh, like a six cores, than uh, ultrasound biopsy. And the MRI before biopsy reduced unnecessary biopsies by 25%. And the MRI before biopsy, the MRI target biopsy was superior than standard ultrasound guided biopsy. And it can be uh, combined with the uh, ultrasound biopsies called MRI TURS fusion guided biopsy. As it, uh, 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 a photo shows that uh, this is the tumor inside the uh, prostate. And then those are regular systematic uh, blind core biopsy under ultrasound. And then this tumor is biopsied under uh, MRI guidance. Not all the prostate cancers are the same. Most of the prostate cancer is an invasive adenocarcinoma. Sometimes pathology report intraductal carcinoma of prostate. This is a non-invasive cancer, but almost always it has coexisting high-grade invasive cancer elsewhere. So patients need to have a definitive uh, treatment. Cribriform prostate cancer is associated with the adverse outcome and indication of poor prognosis. But the prostate intraepithelial neoplasia, PIN, is a truly non-invasive prostate cancer. But when uh, this PIN is a high grade, uh, especially when it uh, shows in multiple sites, patients may need to have a rebiopsy and a follow-up PSA test. Uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma is a uh, very unique and uh, rare, but it is a very aggressive cancer. And the patients often have a low PSA level. Even the patients have a, a kind of a extensive disease and that they do not respond to the hormone therapy. Some cancer cells grow slowly, but the others may grow very aggressively. How do we know? We can determine that aggressiveness of cancer cells by Gleason score. When pathologists examine the cancer cells with the biopsy specimen, they grade cancer cells to grade one to five, depending on how well or poorly cancer cells are differentiated. The higher the number, the more aggressive cancer is. Two predominant areas are chosen and they're given the number each, and they add the two grade numbers to make a Gleason score. Let's practice this Gleason scoring. We have a, a prostate biopsy specimen and the predominantly the cancer cells are uh, composed of a grade four, and then less commonly uh, grade three. Then we write four plus three, and the grade uh, a Gleason score is a seven. But other patients may have the same Gleason score seven, but as you see this uh, specimen, predominantly is composed of a grade three, and the less commonly a uh, grade four. In that case, we write grade uh, three plus four and the seven. So even though with the same Gleason score seven, 4.3 cancers are more aggressive than three plus four uh, cancer. Now uh, we see this in other specimen, predominantly grade four and the less commonly, uh, less predominantly grade five. Then we write four plus five, total nine. This is a very aggressive cancer. And we use the grade group classification system. Uh, when the score is a six, then it's grade group one. It scores seven with a three plus four is a grade group two. And the uh, score seven with a 
grade uh, 4.3 is a grade 3. And then if the score 8 is a grade through 4, a score 9 and a 10 is a grade 5. This is a very aggressive uh, tumor. For staging, we use the T tumor, N lymph node, and the M metastasis status, along with the PSA level and the grade group. We know the grade group depends on the Gleason scoring. T1 tumor is not palpable by digital rectal exam. It's purely incidentally found by a, a prostate biopsy or a prostate surgery. And the T2 is a palpable tumor, but confined within prostate. Depending on the extent of the involvement, it's categorized T2 A, B, C. T2 C means tumor involves both sides of the prostate lobes. T3 tumor extended outside the prostate, for example, uh, bladder neck, or even uh, seminal vesicles, then is a T3B. T4 tumor is a fixed or invasive adjacent structures other than seminal vesicles, uh, such as bladder, rectum, or pelvic wall. Regional lymph nodes, uh, negative is N0, positive is N1. No distant metastasis M0, M1 means distance metastasis, including uh, lymph node metastasis. Of course, this is a non-regional. So for example, uh, pelvic lymph nodes or mediastinal lymph nodes. The bone metastasis is M1B. And the M1C is the other sites with or without bone. And the PSA level depends on less than 10, 10 to 20, or over 20. And depending on the grade one, we already know, depending on the uh, Gleason scoring system. Okay, now let's stage the prostate cancers. Stage one, the tumor is confined inside the prostate and uh, cannot be palpable by digital rectal exam. Stage two, the tumor is palpable by digital rectal exam, but the PSA is uh, less than 20 and the tumor is confined inside the prostate gland. In the stage 3A, uh, the tumor is still confined the uh, uh, prostate gland, but PSA is over 20. Stage 3B, tumor is a bigger, T3 or T4, palpable by the prostate uh, digital rectal exam, of course. And uh, stage 3C uh, is a Gleason score 9 to 10, regardless of the uh, tumor, uh, uh, ex uh, tumor size or the extent. Stage four is the uh, lymph node metastasis, uh, not the regional. It's a more like a pelvic lymph nodes or even a lymph nodes uh, beyond the pelvis. Uh, stage four B is a, a bone metastasis or distant metastasis. To determine the treatment of prostate cancer, we used this NCCN risk stratification schema over the uh, stage, staging uh, of the uh, prostate cancer. Uh, this categorized prostate cancer into six different groups. Very low risk, low risk, intermediate risk, having a favorable and the unfavorable intermediate risk, high risk and a very high risk. Depending on the size of the tumor and the PSA level and the extent of tumor in the biopsy specimen, uh, and also uh, depending on the uh, Gleason scoring system. There are three types of prostate cancer treatment, surgery, radical prostatectomy, and the radiation therapy and the hormone therapy. For the treatment of localized prostate cancer, radical prostatectomy is the, uh, uh, an option. Uh, robotic assistant radical prostatectomy is getting more popular and uh, it causes less blood loss. Radical prostatectomy is indicated uh, for low risk, uh, intermediate risk, and even high risk patients. The complication includes impotence occurring about 50% of patients, but with a bilateral nerve sparing surgery, the instance is much lower. How we treat this impotence with the uh, uh, Viagra or other similar phosphodiesterase uh, inhibitors? About 50% of patients respond to this Viagra-like uh, medicine. Urinary incontinence occurs in about 50%, but gradually decreases to 10 to 15% at two years.
Radiation therapy has two types, external beam radiation and brachytherapy. External beam radiation used the IMRT and the IGRT radiation therapy. This means that the intensity modulated radiation therapy, which uh, target those tumors much more effectively without damaging the uh, nearby normal tissues. And it's supplemented by the image guided radiation therapy called IGRT. Indication for low risk intermediate or even high risk patients. For the unfavorable intermediate risk or high risk patients, hormone therapy is combined uh, to this external beam radiation therapy. Proton radiation is also used, but there is no real benefit over the standard IMRT or IGRT. Complications include the urinary incontinence, but almost always resolve several weeks after uh, radiation therapy. Sexual dysfunction is the major complication, occurring about 40% by two years, same rate as the uh, surgery. And uh, sometimes patients develop diarrhea from radiation proctitis. The brachytherapy involves the uh, inserting the radioactive seed directly into the prostate gland. As you see that uh, through the uh, uh, cannular, the small radioactive seeds are placed inside the uh, prostate gland and guided by uh, ultrasound. It's indicated for low risk and uh, intermediate risk patients. But for the unfavorable intermediate risk, uh, uh, external beam radiation therapy is added after the brachytherapy. The complication is about the same as external beam radiation therapy. Hormone therapy is primarily done for metastatic prostate cancer, but we will discuss more in detail in part two. Thank you for watching.